Hi, I'm Kelly. As a life coach, I've noticed that the work I do with people isn't about their relationships or their jobs. It isn't about their kids or even how to find a way to get all the laundry done. All the work we do together centers around finding the answer to one simple question. What does it mean to live a fulfilled life? Join me as I explore this question and more in conversation with others in the Fulfilling Life interviews with me, Kelly Dahl, as your host. Hello, I'm Kelly, and I'm here today with Deirdre Walsh, who is a friend of mine that I had the great opportunity to meet face-to-face -face this summer at the World Domination Summit in Portland, Oregon, where we got to share many meals and conversations. So it's wonderful to see you again, Deirdre, now that we're back at home. Um, and thank you so much for being here on The Fulfilling Life today. I would love for you to first introduce yourself and share a little bit about the work that you do. Uh -huh. Well, first, I want to thank you first for inviting me because I, you know, as I was preparing for this, I was looking at the other interviews that you've done and wow, have you got an eye for talent. <laughs> <laughs> so I had that moment like, really me? But I trust you. <laughs> really you, definitely. <laughs> Uh, so I'm a uh, certified health coach, and more and more I find that I'm becoming a more of a mindful coach and a breathing coach. Uh, I work with mostly women uh, who are finding that their lives are so overwhelmed by stress and their attention so much goes to kind of the negative parts of life, the, the parts uh, that are difficult for us. and with that we, uh, you know, they've stopped kind of seeing the fun in life and it's starting to show up in say their weight or their lack, they're not sleeping at night or they're yelling at their kids too much or, so, so I help them work with stress resilience uh, through mindfulness and then through different, um, different ways of working with the body to reduce stress. Uh, so that's it in a nutshell. It's beautiful. And, and when we were chatting a little bit before and you were explaining more about what you do, um, my gut reaction was just, oh, I need that. <laughs> because we, we do feel stress and overwhelm in our bodies so much. And we don't always know where that's coming from or how to feel better and reduce the stress. Well, yeah. And it comes up in two areas, really. Your body will show up. The signs of stress will show up in your body first, uh, but usually at the same time, there the the stress is also kind of messing with your mind. <laughs> but because we live in our mind every day, we don't see it as much. But as you know, we're here today talking about what it means to live a fulfilling life, um, and your work is so so connected deeply to living a fulfilling life, um, which makes you a perfect person to talk to about this topic. Um, because that's what you're helping people really do. So for you, Deirdre, what does it mean to live a fulfilling life? Oh, for, for me in my journey, it's about, there's been two things. It's about learning to trust myself and to setting up my life so that I'm playing to my strengths. And it's been, uh, it's been, you know, I've gone up and down with both, both of those things. And as I'm getting older, I just see more and more the importance that those are really the two key things that keep me uh, feel, feeling that my life is fulfilled. Uh, I, 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 I'm, a, I'm a researcher by heart. I love, you know, I'm the person, I'm the annoying person that always has some answer. If you have a question, oh, go to this website or, you know. Uh, so recently I was, I saw a TED talk by Daniel Kahneman and he's the behavioral economist, mm -hmm. uh, but he was looking at how we experience happiness and I, he called it happiness, but I really think it goes back to this idea of fulfillment in life. And he said that there was really two kind of ways that we experience it. One is in the moment to moment, you know, where are we having a nice moment here? Actually, this is a fantastic moment because we're you know, two friends having a chat and, mm -hmm. you know, really a lot of life doesn't really get much better than this. 
Uh, and then there's another sense of time, how we experience happiness in time is in a larger story of our life. Have we, have we made a fulfilling life for ourselves in the longer term? So it's like going moment by moment for, and then also this, this larger experience that we have of life. Uh, so, so it's possible to have, in, have the larger story be very, have it be a very difficult story, but actually have the moment to moment experience of life be a very calm and peaceful one. Hmm. Uh, it's at the same time also, and I think this is what happens with a lot of people, is it's easy, it's all, you can also have an exper a larger experience of life that can be quite fulfilling but because again of stress levels or these kind of other things your moment to moment experience can be quite fearful and can be a very unpleasant experience of life so the you know so a lot of having the fulfillment in life is is kind of matching those two up together yeah yeah that makes sense. It makes total sense. And I think, you know, I think it's really interesting how the moment to moment really does drive so much of it. Mm -hmm. um, and the moment to moment is really where we have a lot of say in the matter. Um, yes. Not necessarily with what happens, but with how we see what happens. Um, and it's making me think of the interview that I did with Karen Mazin Miller, who's a Zen Buddhist priest, mm -hmm. um, who talks a lot about fulfillment can be found in taking out the trash and fulfillment can be found in emptying the dishwasher. These yes. tasks that can be completed um, as a way of loving your home and loving yourself and loving your family and just the beauty of completing a task, which is very fulfilling. So those we, we can shift our perspective on those sorts of day-to-day -day moments, mm -hmm. which if you can learn to see that as fulfilling, mm -hmm. then the whole big pi picture, it's much easier to see that big picture as fulfilling too. Yes. The other, mm -hmm. um, for the other part of it, what I've been, you know, for the larger life, uh, having the satisfaction in the, in the overall story of our life, uh, I've been working a lot with clients, kind of double daring them <laughs> to become the hero of their life. Mm -hmm. And it's that practice of, thinking about maybe what I, I think of 80, but it can be at any time, where you're looking back at your life and you, in that way, you, you pulled something out of yourself. You grew through your discomforts, through your, your sense of your, yourself. You pulled out all the strengths that you have and you really made something of your life that you were proud of. And as you said, we can't control life, but we, uh, we can... We, we know in, in which ways we can make a decision. Will this make me think of myself as a hero later? Or will this actually, will I feel like, like this maybe was regretful? And it's not, and it's not in that sense that we always have to do the right thing. Because I have things that I did that were totally the wrong thing. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I don't, and they were, they were part of the hero's journey for me. Uh, and I wouldn't trade them in for a minute. Uh, so, and I mean, because I know, I mean, anyone will attest, it's not, I'm not going for, like, trying to be Mother Teresa or anything. That's right, never right. Happen. <laughs> but it's a sense of having that fulfillment when you look back in life, you know, and, try, and then trying to balance the fulfillments in each of the moments with, the, with heading in a direction where you have to, you actually have to pull something out of yourself to, uh, you know, to make a life for yourself. Right. And, you know, and if you think about the, the myth of the hero's journey um, that Joseph Campbell has written so extensively about um, and, and others, of course, too, but the hero always does have struggles. Um, the hero always does have moments of darkness and sometimes extreme darkness that are part of the journey and there are stumbling blocks and there are, but there's forward momentum and mm -hmm. there's, there's overcoming obstacles in mm -hmm. that whole journey. Yes. Um, so those dark moments, you, we have to embrace them, right? Because they helped us unfurl into who we are today. Um, some of them might be embarrassing or regretful, but it's, part, it's all part of the package, right? It's all part of the package. And so I'll take the moment to moment to get in the pleasurable moments, you know, because that, mm -hmm. that can be a balance to the dark times when we're going for, when we're, when we're moving towards the larger game of our life, 
And as you say, there can be those times that are not great. And we don't, we wake up in the morning and we may not feel great, right? About what the day is going to bring for us. But at the same time, if you can separate that out from the moment to moment and then have some of the small luxuries of life or some of the small pleasures of life in some, in some moments to moments, it can help balance the two. Yeah. Uh, and so for me, I, that there, there was a real ring of truth in that. And, and I could see ways of pursuing fulfillment in both ways. So that, that brings me to the question of what are some of the things that you do to bring fulfillment into your life? So what are some of those practices that help you be mindful of the moment to moment as well as the bigger picture? Uh, in the moment to moment, I, I definitely get into like the small luxuries of life. <laughs> and that may not, it's not necessarily the, the um, they don't always have to be like financially related. You don't always have to buy them. Sometimes I give myself the luxury of dropping everything and taking off for the day to do something that I really want to do. Or I will, um, you know, the luxury of taking a bath in the evening and just kind of locking the door and, 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 you know, just letting everyone do what they need to do and not be there to support them in that moment. Right. <laughs> and so, so many, so in them, and the bring in the sense of beauty in the moment to moment, try to bring in as much of the of beauty and, um, uh, like good meals, I love good meals. So I'll make a, uh, you know, at least once a week, I try to make a really good meal for myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, for everybody, I share. <laughs> <laughs> you can keep it all to yourself. <laughs> Very much designed to what I feel like eating. Uh, and then, and then in the in the larger, uh, in the longer, in the hero's journey, in the longer view, uh, I was at a Buddhist retreat this uh, summer with uh, Thich Nhat Hanh. And they talked about what our true possessions are. And again, another real moment of the thought of truth was that we have, our real possessions are our body, our, our, what, the way we express ourselves, our speech, mm-hmm. and our mind. And everything else, I mean, in the, in the Buddhist tradition, everything else is an illusion of control or an illusion of possession. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I... So I try to, as I'm in that hero's journey, I try. I had instinctively had those in the back of my mind, but it was, you know, it really made sense to really consider them in those three ways. Yeah. Uh, and 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 kindness is a very strong value for me. So, and I'm not kind all the time, absolutely. <laughs> but I, uh, where I can, I, I try to be kind. I try. That's that's a main practice of mine. I try to be as kind as I possibly can in a moment. Yeah. Yeah. And having spent time with you, I can, I can attest to the fact that you, you do that incredibly well (laughs) in just, in just your being, which is great. You're, you're, uh, you can feel that being around you. Um, so we, that there's a number of things then that you do to help you on this, this hero's journey, which I love. I love calling it that. Um, and the day to day, but what are some of the things that, mess you up what are some of the things that get you in your way from living fulfilled a fulfilled life uh number one is my is my nature (laughs) (laughs) because i am by nature extremely impatient and people say you there's no way that you can be impatient and you you just have to ask my husband (laughs) or my (coughs) And, yeah. Uh, uh, so my nature is to tailgate and to uh, you know I don't cut in lines. I mean the kindness kind of overwhelms that, or you know try. But I'm not that bad, bad. But my I have a very very impatient nature. So that so just my nature and the um, oh there was a there was a great um, there was there was a, a great thing that I a website that I stumbled on a couple of days ago called Archetypes. Mm-hmm. And it helps you understand, again, in this hero's journey, it helps you to understand the archetypes that you work from. Uh, and I found mine were um, in kind of equal measures. There was three of them. Being creative, uh, being uh, visionary, and a lover of ideas. And so I find when I get in trouble uh, is when I am trying to be one in one of the other archetypes, and I can get very frustrated. Uh, because I'm not really, again, I'm not playing to my strengths and I'm not, yeah. um, I'm not being my best. 
and that's not to say that there's not value in others of, in the, in being part of those other um, uh, caregiver like like caregiver was one uh, mm-hmm. that there was times in my life where I've been more of a caregiver than I really wanted to be mm-hmm. not wanted to be um, that it just I, I would get very frustrated in that role yeah um, because it's I'm not playing to who I really am. Yeah, I love that. That's really, really, it's it's so simple, but really so powerful too to think. And I love that you point out that it's your nature that is your bigger, biggest stumbling block and that people question you when you share what you're, a piece of what your nature is. And, you know, I get, I get a lot of people who tell me, oh, you're so calming and all these kinds of things. And, and a lot of it is because in here it is not calm at all. So... You know, I'm anxious by nature and I'm a thinker and I'm in my head so much that because of that, I've had to work really hard to mm-hmm. overcome that, I guess, um, is one way of looking at it um, or to live just to live with it. Um, yes. So part of that is learning to be calm on the, the exterior and trying to bring it in as well. But um, yeah, people wouldn't necessarily believe that of me, maybe. Um so it's it's very interesting, very interesting. So those stumbling blocks are there. So what what how do you move past them then? Um, you mentioned I, I'm getting the sense that self knowledge and and learning and the research piece that you talked about yes. is one way. Um, yes. Would you? And it's oh no, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's staying with the practices of yeah. um, uh, of. The, of kindness again is is really trying to say with that practice is is how I move past things. Uh, I, you know, I I if I am you know George Bernard Shaw talked about being like a sniveling little clod of grievances and uh, <laughs> you know angst against the world. And when I feel like that, uh, I I know that there's kind of usually about one of three things that's that's going on. Either one, I'm just uh, I'm. In terms of that hero's journey, I'm not in that hero's journey. Like I'm not challenging myself enough. I'm not being enough. I have, I'm not putting myself in that area of growth enough, mm-hmm. so that I start looking around and saying, "Well, I can't do it because so and so, you know, is a block, or I can't." You know, when I start right. that that right. outward, uh, that part of my nature coming out, it can be like I just am not up. I haven't, you know, I haven't put myself up for it enough. Uh, right. right. And so it could be like time to to reevaluate that, or it could be that I'm in. The, I have put myself up for enough, and I'm just wearing myself out too much. Yeah. And I, in that in that sense of creative tension between where I am now and where I want to be, I'm just driving myself too hard, and I'm not honoring the fact that I have had the energy issues in the past, and that I need a, a, you know I need to look after myself. Right. Um, and so it's. Uh, so I said, I think it's, so it's usually one of those two, I think, yeah. um, the, uh, yeah, so I'm just, but it, no matter what it is, it's, it's usually internal. <laughs> right, right. One, one that I would add to that list. I think those two are fantastic. One for me at least is, um, if something like there's a, there's a door that I've left open that I need to close and it could be just like a task to finish that is something that's just been kind of needling at me and weighing at me that I haven't finished or I haven't um, put something out as far as I could or something along those lines. Um, so sometimes I'll just like sit and see, okay, what's what's open still? Because I'm blocked completely and it's it's an email response that I haven't written or something like that. So making sure that, that things are, are able to flow by being finished too. Right. Yes, that's a. I thank you because I, I I get I've started again now this year because one of my my one of my aspects one of these archetypes is creative. Mm-hmm. Um, I find over time in my life certain ones are more prominent mm-hmm. and then but they all take a slightly different uh, structure of my life uh, so that I can express them. And so with creativity, uh, I need a very specific kind of opening to my day and closing to my day. Mm-hmm. I guess opening this way and closing this way, so, so that I can, so that I can release my mind from the creative process and kind of rest because it's it's and it's like as you say, it's tying up the loose ends mm-hmm. to let more really great stuff in. 
when and it's you... driven in and out again. Yeah. Right. And sometimes that's releasing, right? And sometimes that's like, it's time to follow through on this idea and make it happen. Because when yeah. you are creative, the generative process is pretty easy. You know, there's always, there's always things coming forward, um, yeah. which can feel overwhelming. So you do, you need those, those beginnings and the ends to keep it, to keep it contained a bit. Um, yeah. And I did that, the archetype website and I can't remember what mine are so I'm going to have to go and re revisit them but it is it's a fascinating site to to gain some self perspective and understand who you are and I really love the tie in that you have of of knowing that some of those periods of discomfort were because you were living too much in an archetype that doesn't suit you and isn't really who you are um yeah. which is going to cause all sorts of discomfort and stress and and all yes. sorts of things um, yeah. And learning to be comfortable with who those archetypes are and who mm -hmm. you truly are, which was one of the pieces that you said about um, being fulfilled is, is accepting your own truth, uncovering it, and, and, then, and then following and accepting that truth. Yeah. Um, and I think as women, too, you mentioned caregiver, and we're, you know, we're raised to be caregivers, and right. that is so... Um, that's that's what we're supposed to be number one and we're not all caregivers number one um, which can which I I wouldn't consider myself a caregiver number one um, but that doesn't make me less of a woman and it doesn't make me less of a mother or a wife or any of those things or a daughter you know that just means that that's not where I'm most comfortable yeah but I'm still capable yeah and it goes, a lot of that goes back to creating conditions in your life, creating a structure. I'm a structural thinker. Structure where you actually, where you actually can thrive mm -hmm. and that you are, and it may be in the, you know, in the times of the caregiver, for me, it was both my parents passed away over like between five years and my kids were kind of uh, working into their tweens. So there was, there was a lot, a lot of people needed me for a lot of different things. Uh, and the um, and I was and I was never sorry that I did it for one moment, but it wasn't me at my best. Yeah. And so it was fulfilling in a larger sense because I was a good mother and a good daughter. But in se in, in the sense of a, having a personal fulfillment, uh, not not as much. And it would been it would have been wise for me at that time to have looked to, maybe to have understood about the creative and had a creative project that I could have stayed with you know building that sense of fulfillment in my life or right. an understanding where where I sh where I personally shine and there was one story that I was I loved and this is from a while back again but it was um you know the idea of of creating these structures for ourselves I heard of a woman was at a meeting with a bunch of people that had done very well in the early dot-com years. Mm -hmm. You know, when you, when you had like the, you were like the fourth employee and then you became a billionaire. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and they were, uh, they were discussing, they were talking about how much, uh, how their hard work had paid off in this financial reward. And then she just kind of got sick of it after a little bit. And she said, do you really think that you work harder than a, than a single mother with three kids on, uh, you know, who's, who's struggling, who's working like two or three jobs and right. struggling to make ends meet? You do not work harder than that, that woman. So mm -hmm. what you were in was like a structure where you, where you thrived, where right. your, you were seen as valuable and where your efforts were able to turn into something that, you know, that was tangible. And so I, I found in the area times in my life where I get more frustrated or I feel like it's not as fulfilling, I'm in some environment or structure where I'm not, thr I'm not, I don't have the qualities to thrive or mm -hmm. my, you know, where I'm not building in those areas where I shine. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, we can't pick and choose. Life is life. But uh, right. the more we can design our life so that we can actually take our strengths and and have them build into something that we again see as that hero's journey. I think the more we can we can look back and go, yeah, actually, you know what? I, I was pretty damn cool. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. And celebrate it. And know know the all the pieces that bring fulfillment to our lives and that that there are gonna be times when when the the undesirables are are leading, but you can still have the other pieces there. Um, 
so that there can be there can be light at all times. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Deirdre, you have proven without a doubt that you were very worthy of being a part of this interview series. It has been so amazing to talk with you and hear your ideas about living a fulfilling life and learn through you and what you shared. So thank you very, very much. Um, do you have any last thoughts or anything to share about your work with everybody before we say goodbye today? Well, you know what? I'm evolving into, as I say, the mindfulness and, and breathing, but the mindfulness is coming more and more into my work and more and more of my clients really want that in their life. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to find a way to bring mindfulness in an everyday way to, to, to people. Uh, so if anyone has, wants to share with me, like maybe you can put my email address up if they want, if anyone reading this is how they would, could, would like to see mindfulness in their life or would like to know more about mindfulness or any of that kind of thing. So I'm starting to look at building some programs and things. So I love input. Beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. Lover of ideas. Yes. Yes. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. And what a great question too. How do people want to bring mindfulness into their everyday life and what tools could help that? Um, because, you know, the more and more people I talk to, and I'm sure you, I mean, you share that with your clients and then I'm sure just general people, I feel like so many people are just hungry for this in their life um, and need it and want it. So what a great question. So I hope everybody answers that for you and um, maybe leave comments on this or email you. Wonderful. Well, thank you again for being here, Deirdre. It was great to talk with you, um, and we'll have to do it over a meal again sometime like we were able to out in Portland. Um, so thank you very much, and have a beautiful day. You too. Thanks, Kelly.